Hey guys, um, I just wanted to do a little tutorial today talking about Require.js. Um, this is going to be relevant for front-end web developers. Um, you know, it has some application in uh, back-end JavaScript development, uh, but primarily it's a performance tool that works on, uh, on the front-end. And um, what it does is it allows you to load your JavaScript files asynchronously and then manage the dependencies and manage whether they have been included on the page or, uh, or whether they're still loading. So I'm going to kind of run through a scenario where you would want to use Require.js and then we'll actually implement it and I'll show you guys the difference there. So I am currently SSH'd into a DigitalOcean droplet that's running Ubuntu. Um, it's very straightforward, and then we have uh, an Nginx web server stood up on that machine. So if I curl localhost, I get back a website, and I can show you guys that over here. That is right here. Welcome to Nginx, and it's just a very basic web page. So if I actually find the file, this is the actual index file that we're pulling up. And you can see it says welcome to Nginx, has some HTML, uh, and then we're actually we're including jQuery. So in this example, we're going to play around with um, the jQuery library and we're going to kind of pretend that that is the dependency that you're trying to manage. And I will show you guys uh, the actual issue. So with this page at the uh, at the top of the closing body tag, we have an insert script tag which calls jQuery and loads it onto the page. And then above the closing body tag, we actually run some jQuery code, which is denoted by the dollar sign, which is the default jQuery namespace. So if I run this, what's going to happen is that this jQuery is going to grab the h1 element and it's going to replace the text welcome to nginx with jQuery ran and change the DOM. So let's go ahead and try that. And it works. So the page loads, jQuery gets loaded onto the page, and then we render everything sequentially. And that's great. The problem is the way we're loading and injecting jQuery in this scenario is what's called synchronously, meaning we, we, we aren't going to render, we're not going to load anything below that script tag until the file's been inserted and loaded onto the page. And the problem with that is it has performance implications. Um, you know, if, this, if the server takes forever to re return this file, then, uh, you know, things, we have to wait. We have to wait for this file to load. And then imagine if you have 20 script tags, because a lot of modern applications are calling several script tags from several different vendors several different origin web servers, you can very quickly be adding latency and overhead to your page load where you don't necessarily want to. So the way we combat that is we load, we decide to load the script asynchronously. So I'm going to do what is supported by HTML5, which is throwing the async flag into that script tag. And what that's going to do is it's going to instruct the browser when, it, when the DOM gets painted, it's going to load jQuery and it's going to say, hey, make the request for jQuery, but continue on and load everything um, even before we get the response from the, from the server. So I'm, th I'm throwing the async flag in there and then let's run that. So interesting, I just ran that and our DOM changes were not made. So let's see what happened there. So if I go to the console here, we see an error gets thrown and it says dollar is not defined. So what's happening is when the page loads, we issue our request for jQuery, but because we're requesting it asynchronously, we're going to continue on to our code. And then down here, we're calling the dollar, the jQuery namespace, and it hasn't been loaded yet. And as a result, we're getting an undefined error. So our dependency for this code down here is jQuery and jQuery has not been defined yet. So that creates that creates an issue. Now we could do something like this 
and what we're doing with this is we're manually saying, hey, wait, wait to run this code. Wait three seconds to run this code. And what that'll do is it'll give us some time to load jQuery. So let's try that. So you can see it, wait, it, it's, it, it waited for three seconds and then it ran the code. And that works. But the problem is, is that's horrible because you don't want to be polling, you don't want to be using set timeouts. It's not efficient and it's not good code. So the way we actually do this in, in practice and in production is uh, we use require.js. And that's the whole purpose of require is, to, is to, to give us the ability to load these scripts asynchronously, but at the same time um, manage effectively our code that is dependent on that. So what we're going to do is let's comment out this script and let's, use, let's, let's implement jQuery here. So I'm going to comment this, uh, uh, sorry, implement uh, require. So I just commented out jQuery and we're going to start and we're going to use require instead. So require has a main base file which is the actual library for require and that does need to be loaded first. But after we load that, everything else could be, load, could, could be loaded asynchronously. So I'm just going to throw that onto the page. And we'll comment out our jQuery code for a second since we don't have jQuery on the page. I'm just going to make sure require loads correctly. So yeah, it's like one little caveat. You have to make sure require.js is loaded uh, first, but after require is loaded, everything else could be loaded via require, and it could be loaded asynchronously. So, okay, and it's defined, so everything looks good here. So we have the require library on the page. Now let's try to go back and do what we were trying to achieve initially with jQuery. What do we want to do? We want to load jQuery asynchronously and then we want to call some code without using timeouts or polling or any of that. So the way require works is you use require and then you pass it an array of dependencies. What's our dependency in this instance? Is jQuery. So we're going to pass it just jQuery. This could be a local path. It could be a predefined variable. Right now it's a, it's a remote uh, location and we pass that as an array, and then we pass a callback function, which is how asynchronous code works. It works via callbacks. You do one thing, and then it'll load the callback when that thing's done. So what do we want to do as a callback function? Well, we want to run our jQuery code. So let's go ahead and grab this. So we're saying, hey, require jQuery, and then as soon as jQuery is loaded, run our jQuery code. So this should work. Boom. Okay, so everything worked. We, we loaded jQuery. You can see it right here. First we loaded require, but then we loaded jQuery, and we loaded jQuery asynchronously. And then we made the DOM change as soon as it was loaded. Now, J require does a ton of stuff under the hood. Um, if, I'm, if I use another require statement with this jQuery, it's not going to reload jQuery. It's going to detect that it's already loaded. So it's really efficient. It's got a ton of other features where you could, you could just define jQuery as a variable. You could load an array of um, dependencies. There's a ton of other stuff you could do. This is really just scratching the surface. Um, but this is um, how you would... Uh, manage uh, asynchronous um, script loading. And to really just illustrate the point here, what I want to show you is um, just the sequence of load items. So if I do console.log first, because code gets evaluated top to bottom, um, I want to show you how this prints out. So console.log first, second, and then down here, And what I'm going to show you is, if this was blocking code, we'd get first, second, and third, because the different statements are blocking. But we're not going to get that. We're going to get something else, and I'm going to show that to you. So let's load this and see what prints to the console. First, third, second, because it's non-blocking. So this item here, it got evaluated, but it's going to take some time. 
this item takes time because it has to fetch this resource. And then, but we're moving on to this line here. If it was synchronous, we would wait for this, we'd print second, and then we'd print third. So I'm just proving here that this is loading asynchronously. All right, that is all I got today, so thanks.